What's up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the rear disc brakes on your Audi Q7. So I'm working on my 2015 Audi Q7 and I saw online that a full brake job disc and rotors is gonna cost you 1,500 to 2,000 bucks. I think not. I bought uh, all the tools I need for this for about $30 and then I bought all the parts for about 400 bucks. So I saved myself a ton of money by doing this myself and that's why I made this video. So enough talk, let's jump right into it and get our brakes replaced. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is pull the car up to a level surface and then we're going to chalk the side that we're not working on. So I grabbed these old brake drums that I had to chalk the front wheels because I'm working on the back. Now that that's all chalked and secure, we're gonna work on starting to get the wheels loose so we can pull them off. If this is the first time you ever took the wheel off your Audi, they have these little caps on the rims and there's a little hook tool in your Audi toolkit in your trunk that will help you take this cap off. So pop the cap off. Then also in that toolkit is this little wrench and then you could break the lugs with that. Once all the lugs are broken on the side you're working on, we're gonna work on jacking up the car. There's only a couple places you can actually put a jack on an Audi. Um, the manual will say where, but for the rear, it's this little plastic part right here and for the front it's this pretty obvious little pad so get your car jacked up i also threw a jack on both sides on what looks like a solid frame support here and last step of our prep is to throw some cardboard underneath you never know what's going to fall out from these wheels and of course take the wheels off all right so the first thing we're going to do is there's brake sensor warning uh cables that kind of go across the caliper so there's one on the clip and there's, there's one in the caliper here. So we just wanna loosen those up so it's nice and free and we can pull the cables out easy and the brake pads out easy. Now when you get to the plug itself, you might need a little help. Um, grab a flathead screwdriver. And then if you push it into the tab on the top, push it towards the cable and then wiggle it, it should pop out. There we go. So now the plug's out. Now we're going to work on pulling the brake pads out. All right, so now all the cables are free. So the next step is to remove the pin that's holding down the brake pads. This is pretty simple. It's going to be different on different cars. Some are held in like by a bolt. The fronts are actually held in by a rod with a bolt. Um, for this, it's just a, a pin that's holding down a spring plate. And then it's a little cotter pin that you got to pull out. So grab some needle nose pliers and then first pull out the little cotter pin just like that. And then to get the pin out or to get the, I guess it's a holding rod. I don't know what to call it. Um, to get this little rod out here, you're gonna push it from the outside of the car. You just kind of have to push down on the spring and then give it a push like that. And just keep pushing. Um, you might want to grab a hammer and then if it's pretty stubborn, you could put the screwdriver in and then tap it in until it starts pushing the little rod. There we go. Okay, rod's out. Grab this little spring plate and work it around all the little brake pad warning sensor cables and pop it out. Now put your rod, your plate, and your cotter pin in a safe spot because we got to clean these later when we go to put it all back together. Okay, next step is to actually pull the pads out. So to do this, you have to compress the pistons that are on either side of the caliper. So I can literally just hold down on the pad and I can see the piston compressing right there. Do it to the other side, push it down, push it down, push it down. Take your time, pull the pads out, and that's it. Now the pads are out. Put the pads in a safe place because we're gonna have to clean those up later. If you have new pads, then you can just throw those old pads away. All right, now I'm pausing here for a second to show you where I'm at and why I'm replacing this rotor. So um, you can replace the brake pads and have brand new brake pads and still be getting a squeak because the squeaks can also come from the rotor. Um, there's, a, there's a manufacturer recommended width of a rotor. You can look that up for your vehicle. Um, for mine, it's recommended every 70,000 miles to change this rotor. And you can see it's got some pretty deep grooves in it. If I try and get the camera over to the side, this top lip is pretty grooved out. So it's always good to change your rotor about every 60 to 70,000 miles. Um, if your steering wheel starting to pulse, if you're hitting your brakes and you're 
kind of pulsing backwards and forwards. Those are all signs of your rotors needing to be replaced. All right, now it's time for the trickiest part of this whole thing. So if I try and get my camera back here, you can see on the caliper, it's held by these funky little, they're called triple square bolts, right? And this is uh, an M16 triple square bolt. There's another one on the bottom. So I gotta break these. So what I, what I have is a half inch breaker bar, an M16 socket, which is this triple square socket. And I'm gonna break these bolts and then I'm gonna take my half inch socket wrench and then loosen them up and then pop the caliper off. Also make sure once you get that socket sitting in there, it's sitting in as deep as it can. You don't want it to just be on the tip of the socket and then you strip this bolt because that would be a big old pain in the butt to try and get this bolt out once that happened. And one more tip is there is a sensor line blocking this top bolt here. So you'll need to pop that sensor line out and then remove the top bolt. Then you can take the caliper off. Once the caliper is off, get it zip tied and secured. And let's work on removing the rotor. And taking the rotors off pretty easy. All we have to do is undo this little Torx bolt down here. The size of that is a T50. So get your T50 Torx and then undo it. And then I'll have all these tools in the description of this video. So if you wanna make yourself a shopping list before doing this, so you can buy a Torx and the other M16 kind of socket, you can go ahead and do that. All the sockets and everything together is probably like 20 bucks. And an Audi mechanic being $200, totally worth it. All right, with the rotor off, it's time to put in the new rotor. So when you unpack these things, they typically have uh, some like glue or film so that that plastic doesn't actually stick to the rotor itself. So it's good to clean them up with some brake part cleaner, or you can hit it with like a paint thinner or lacquer thinner or something like that. So I grab my brake part cleaner and some uh, microfiber cloth, and then I just clean this up. So it's pretty simple to put the rotor back on. Um, this is why we don't hit our emergency brake when we're working on the rear brakes here, because it has the emergency brakes kind of work like a drum. And if this was activated, it'd be impossible to put this new rotor back on. But pretty simple. What we do is we look for the hole that has a little indent in it that matches this little holding bolt right here. And we slide it on. We can see all the lug nut holes are lined up line up the bolt hole and put the retaining bolt back on. So for this little retaining bolt, you can torque it down to 26 foot pounds if you're trying to be super exact, but 26 is about what you can do with a hand wrench. So I'm just gonna do that. Sweet. Uh, now the old rotor, you can see this other little bolt hole right here. This old rotor has a bolt in it. So I'm gonna take this old bolt out, put it back in that new rotor slot. Not really sure what it does, but it's a T27 and I'm gonna undo that and put that one in. Got fingerprints all over this new rotor, so I'm gonna clean that up. All right, new rotor's on. Now it's time to jump over to the workbench and then clean up all the parts for the caliper, put the caliper back on, and then we're done. All right, we're over at the workbench now. You can see we got the, the pads, the rod, the cotter pin, and the spring. Um, so pretty much the rule, you want to clean everything where there's metal to metal contact. So where that rod went across the spring here, where the pistons hit the pad, and then that will eliminate potential squeaking or seized up kind of things. So you can hit it with just some brake cleaner and rub it, maybe scrape it down with some wire wheel. I'm going to actually go ahead and use my little bench grinder with a wire wheel on it and get these really clean and down to metal, except for the brake pads. I'm not gonna hit those on a wire wheel. I'm just gonna clean these off with a little brake cleaner and then uh, put the grease on, put the grease on everything, throw it all back in and then we're pretty much done. For the pad, I don't really want brake cleaner on the pad, so I'm gonna spray the rag first and then I'm just gonna rub the pad. There we go, nice and clean. All right, now with the rod and the spring all prepped and ready to go back in with some brake grease, I'm gonna put these off to the side and start working on the brake pads. So my brake pads are pretty new. You can see here's the wear indicator and I still have a lot of brake pad left. 
So I'm gonna keep these brake pads. What I'm gonna do is just sand them with about 120 grit sandpaper and call it good. Now, if your brake pads are showing that they need to be changed or if they have chunks missing, or if they're really low, then I recommend changing them. When you change your brake pads, you're also gonna need to change the brake sensors here. I did make a video on how to actually make a dummy plug to disable the brake pad warning light. You can check that out in that link up there. But for this one, I'm just gonna sand these pads down and throw them back in. I got 120 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna sand them. All right, so stopping for a second, you can see this one has been sanded down pretty flat. A couple of scratches, but those are gonna be okay. You can see on the other side, this one's all shiny. Um, so the difference, is this had some oil, some something else happened on it. Probably what's causing a brake squeak too. When you get some new brake pads, it's always good to hit them with a little sandpaper and then that will get rid of any of the varnish or glues or anything else that attached to this when it was shipped. Now I'll sand up the other side. Cool, these are pretty sanded down nice. One other thing is if your pads have a uneven wear to them, that means you have a piston that's kind of pushing it uneven. You should check out your caliper pistons then and think about replacing your caliper. But these are wearing even, they're new, they're sanded, they're ready to go back in. So let's go put the brake pads in, the spring and the rod. All right, so time to put this caliper back on. And now for the caliper bolts, Audi recommends you replace these bolts completely, but I think that's kind of a ploy to get you in the dealership and charge you for some more stuff. So I'm just gonna reuse these bolts. If I'm completely wrong and you're an Audi mechanic, leave a comment and I'll replace these bolts. I also threw a little blue Loctite on the bolts. Um, and then through my research on all the Audi blogs, I came to the conclusion that I'll torque these at 140 foot pounds or 190 Newton meters. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just make sure that you look up the torque specs for your specific car. Every car is gonna be a little different. But for me, 140 foot pounds, let's do it. All right, with the caliper all torqued down, I got to remember to put this little cable back in. So now it's good. Now let's work on the brake pads and lubing everything up. All right, so how I like to deal with the brake pads and getting grease on them is just like this. I hold the pads together, do a little dot of grease on each side, and then rub the grease in where the piston's going to go. And now these are nice and greased. Flip it over, get the other side, go put them in the car. Now when I put the pads in, I want to see which side that the brake sensor cables are going. So the sensor is going towards the inside of the car, obviously. So I need to flip these. There we go. Now I have the cable and the plug pointing towards the inside of the car. And then I just slide them in. Sometimes your pistons might have started popping out right here. So just Get your fingers in there and push the piston back and you'll be fine. Now let's grease up the rod, the spring, and the cotter pin and put those all back in. Some grease there. Some grease where it hits the pads. There we go. All greased up. Now I want that little hook to actually be on the top because it's gonna hold this little red cable away from hitting the wheel. So swoop it in. There we go. I'm not gonna put the cable in the spring clip yet. I'm just gonna have it hold like that. Then I'm gonna grab my rod. You can see that there's a smaller beveled edge that's gonna go towards the outside of the car. Good amount of grease on this. Beveled edged first line up all the holes, push the spring down. There, now the rod's pushing on top of the spring. Grab my little hammer to help me out. There it is. All right, now we're through. Everything's held down. The spring's pushing down the pads. The rod's holding the spring down. I'm gonna clip this little cable back underneath the clamp. Grab my cotter pin, find the hole here, and push my cotter pin in. 
there we go it's all assembled uh last little step is i gotta plug this uh brake sensor warning plug back in before i put the plug back in i hit it with this uh electrical part cleaner just because some dirt can get up in here or water or anything and if you hit it with this cleaner it's gonna help mitigate that brake sensor warning light putting getting turned on when it doesn't need to be so clean that let it dry for a second while it's dry i'm just gonna just put this plug back in a caliper here now this is dry just plug it back in listen for the click there we go and we're good to go now just put the wheel on All right, everybody, that was a whole video. I hope it helped you out. If it did, don't forget to like the video. If you're into these car-related videos, check out my channel for more. That's it. Thanks for watching.